Today we're all about new metal finishes, so we'll be putting on test Owlclad against Mr. Metal Color, against Model Master, and against AK's new true metal finish. Catching up on Tamiya's uh, Mark IV tank, absolutely lovely build with that one, so we got parts seven and eight went up this week, so we'll be catching up on that. We've got gossip from the live shows. Something a little bit different in the review section this week. We've got the Warhammer 40,000 and we've got the Necron Battle Force. Plus all the other news and gossip. Hello, welcome to Flory Models. I'm Philip Flory and welcome to our new metal finish. Today's show is literally dedicated to the art of giving metal effects to plastic. Okay, i.e. that nightmare scenario of trying to get that metal luster look onto your model. Let's face it, painting normal paint you can get away with, there's a few little techniques and things like that, but certainly when it comes to metal finishes, it's a nightmare. And it's probably the most asked question I get personally, it's the most asked question on our live shows, uh, and just generally. Everybody, it's like a, a black art, everybody just wants to know the easiest way to go down. So what I thought I'd do is, I would dedicate a couple of days, and to be honest I've been filming for three days this week doing this, um, just putting it down. Just that's just talk about getting it down on the model first. Okay. Then we talk about what you can and can't do with it, uh, and what type of effects you can expect from different brands. So I've basically done a test with four of what I think are the most popular metal finishes out there. So we've got Alclad. Everybody knows Alclad. It's been around a long, long time. Um, it's one of those paints where I think people are a little bit more. Um, mythical about it, about getting the right type of effect. Personally, I don't have a problem with it. I just chuck it down, it does the job and everything else. My problem with it is it stinks and it's not particularly nasty. <laughs> you know, it, it's not nice stuff to work with and I've tried to move away from stuff like that purely just because the amount I do every day. Okay, next up we've got the GSI. This is the uh, Mr. Hobby. Uh, this is the Mr. Metal Color stuff. We spoke about it, we reviewed it in the past. Um, I do love it. It's brushable, which is fantastic um, and it's buffable so you can change the texture and the tone of the paint and the brightness and everything else like that just by rubbing it which is amazing downside is really messy it just keeps giving ie if you don't seal it down it comes off all over your hands the other one um, is this is the non buffing type although they do do a buffing type and this is the uh, model master buffables okay uh, non buffing metalizer paints okay as i said it's really confusing they do two types buffing and non buffing this is the non buffing one but again i think it's one of the best ones for a straightforward out of the bottle to give you a metal type sheen then obviously the new boy on the town okay we all remember rub and buff or you do if you're old enough okay um, this is a new slant on it AK Interactive just released it uh, they call it true metal we had a bit of a play with it on the live show we loved it we thought it was great so we thought we put it on test so today we've got a bit of a special on test this is four against each other in what I call everyday testing okay so over the course of the show we're gonna look at exactly how easy it is to go down how tough it is um, the type of finishes you can get from it um, and then how resilient it is to things like masking over painting over spraying and stuff like that okay uh, and as I say it's around about two and a half hours of video that I've managed to get out of this last couple of days um, obviously we're not going to fit it all on here members you can watch the other extra bits obviously they're going to be in the members areas uh, and things like that but you're going to get a good gist of it throughout today's show so we'll be getting back to that in a moment. First of all, got to talk about this week. Uh, great week this week, really pushed on. Uh, a lot of you have seen it with the Mark IV uh, Tamiya tank. It's a lovely kit and I really am enjoying weathering it. And I must admit, it's one of those things with the washes, because I sort of use them and I chuck them down, I don't take, appreciate them that much. Doing that, loads of fun. Literally, as you'll see, there's, um, I think it's parts uh, eight and nine are really about the actual weathering about it. Uh, spraying the stuff down and taking it off and it just is a lot of fun. So if you ever want to know about washes and chucking it down to get easy effects, literally straight away with no hassle, then have a look at that one. Um, and there you go. So plenty to see in that one. Um, I hope to have it finished next week. Well, I'll definitely have it finished next week, but uh, really have enjoyed it. And they are back in the UK now. Hannah's has them back in stock. So if anybody is after that particular one, you can go out and grab one now. Haven't done anything to the Heinkel Bomber, which is over there, because to be honest, with all this metal fleck floating around this week, I didn't want to get it on that. So that is under covers over there. The truck, which is I'm about to do maybe over the weekend or certainly after we film this, 
um, has been primed, okay, and it's all ready. Because I'm gonna be using um, candy blue, uh, and then we're gonna be using that sort of pearlescent paint on it. This has to be, it's primed, and then we're gonna go over it with silver, so this is why all this is out as well. Then we're gonna go in with the candy blues and build up, because they're like a clear lacquer blue, and then you build them up, and then we're gonna put on that pearlescent effect over the top to give it that three-dimensional. So it's all sat over here, to be honest, and it's all in primer, ready to go after I've finished filming this. Um, but because we were playing with metalizers and everything this week, it seemed appropriate to do it. And I have to say, everything in the studio has now got a silver glint to it through spraying this for the last three days, really. Um, so it's gonna need a bit of a clean up around here, and that's one of the drawbacks to this stuff. A um, couple of things we do have to talk about. The live show, sorry we had a little bit of trouble with Steve on uh, Tuesday. He had a bit of trouble with uh, the old technology. It's great when it works, when it doesn't, as we all know, it is a bit of a nightmare. Um, but uh, he hopes to be back with us very, very soon. Uh, we'll get him on there. He's getting a new webcam and everything else like that. So he should be fine on there. Over Christmas, Hans is going to join us for a few shows. Um, so I've spoken to him. So he's going to be on with us. Uh, the live shows, a few of them. We're going to try and get in some of the different time zones, the US one and perhaps Australia between now and the new year as well. So look forward to seeing those. Uh, and thanks for your continued support and questions and Haribo uh, throughout it. We really enjoy doing it. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying it. So if you are, join us, post up the questions. And as I say, so far we're undefeated. We've answered everybody's questions that have been posted up to us um, during the live show. So really do enjoy it. They're a lot of fun. It's a light-hearted look, and you get to see a little bit behind the scenes here as well, because obviously I was reviewing kits again this week, live on the show. Um, obviously the true metal we went through and spoke about and various things like that. So pretty much loads going on there. Uh, two things we do have to talk about. We've got the um, Christmas presents for non-members are ongoing at the moment. What that is, I've picked out live, or not live so much, there's a couple of live shows in amongst there, but the video builds are free to watch. Um, certain parts of them, uh, every other day I've been putting one up, so we're up to part four now um, on there. So it's your fourth Christmas present, and I think, if I remember rightly, uh, it went up this morning, it will be the actual Hind 24, talking about taking off um, the uh, uh, backing or the clear part of the decal, so you're just left with the actual the wording on there and about washes and weathering it and things like that. Before that, we have painting the Star Destroyer. That was up there before that. I've got to think what the others are now. I can't remember that far back. But as I say, there's plenty of up there and it will continue. So if you're a non-member, keep an eye either on the uh, Today page on the site or certainly keep an eye on our Facebook page and I'll post them up there so you can see all of those. Talking to Facebook at the moment, if you do fancy winning a full set of the entire Flory Sanders range, um, the number 10 packs got all the Sanders we do there's 10 in the range it's in there all you've got to do is like and share uh, the post that's actually up on the actual Facebook page to win a um, set of uh, full sanders as I said it's going to be drawn on Monday it'll close okay and then there'll be another one up after that which will be a chance for you to win washes exactly the same thing so as I say it's not going to cost you anything all you've got to do is like and share on your Facebook page and you'll be entered free into the draw to win those sanders and obviously we'll post them anywhere in the world to you so, loads going on there. Uh, the other thing as well I've got to mention, just as we try and whip through some of these, is that uh, the forum had a bit of a, an upgrade or an update recently, so we're starting to implement that, and that is where we're putting all the forums into sub-forums. So, for instance, um, the uh, paint section, I suppose, is the best one, uh, which I did uh, early part of the week. Instead of just having every different paint manufacturer and all the questions and the various topics about it and chat about it, um, it's all just under paints now. You click in it, it will then bring you all those different forums up um, on the actual one. So that obviously we've got things on there on Owlclad, um, uh, Model Masters, Tamiya Paints, Acan, everybody's paints that's out there. Um, so now click in there, they're all still there. It's not like they've all gone, it's just they're inside a subfolder in that forum. It just keeps down the size of the actual forum so you don't have to scroll on for miles. And then obviously all the historical stuff from the group build. So all the group build reveals uh, and all your work and everything else like that, that's been put into one because that was massive down the bottom there because there must be, what, 50 of those down there now. So there's, you know, it was taking over the forum. It's taking forever to scroll down. So this way it just speeds it up. So there we go, that's it for the moment. So anyway, let's get back onto new metal finishes. So to start off with, Buster got him out of retirement again, bless him. And uh, so we're, on this first part, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at obviously the paints themselves, what they do, and how easily they are to go down and how resistant they are to masking. Hello 
Hello, welcome to Flory Models, I'm Philip Flory. Today we've got something a little bit special. We're gonna be doing a head-to-head -head between probably one of the most common asked questions that myself, probably a lot of the guys get, and that's about metalizers. When we're talking metalizers, we're talking metal effect paint. Now, um, traditionally, uh, you can just go out and get your normal metalizer type paints if you like. Uh, so down here we've got some like flat aluminium, um, Tamiya do a range, obviously guns do a range. Everybody basically does a range. They all have a problem in an acrylic form. That is the actual, the size of the fleck itself it does tend to be a little bit heavy, shall we say. Uh, and you can see the flakes of the metal in there. Then metalizer paints really came about in the last sort of 10 years uh, and companies such as Alclad really raised the bar with the type of effect and the finish you can get with something pretty much straight out of the bottle. Uh, the only downside to it is, one, it stinks. Uh, secondly, is the price is quite expensive because it's pre-thinned, it doesn't go very far, okay, and everything else like that. But the plus side is it was probably the best type of metal effect you could get on your model. Then everybody else started to catch up. So uh, the mainstream guys jumped on the ball uh, and then you started getting buffable metalizer paints and things like that, okay? So uh, Mr. Metal Color, which is one of my favorite ones, you can hand paint it, you can then obviously put it through an airbrush, you can then buff it up to the type of shine you want. Then you get your sort of normal standard metalizer. This is a non-buffing variety, but gives you a great metal finish. Okay, so this is Model Master, again, one of my favorites. Then there was old school stuff like rub and buff and stuff like that. Okay, they sort of died to death and went very, very quiet. And then all of a sudden, uh, AK Interactive, these guys here, came up with this. Okay, now this is what they're calling true metal, which is a wax base. Yep, you heard it, it's wax, okay? So what we thought we'd do is we'd give these a real good run for the money and see exactly what we've got. Now, to be honest, this is gonna be a series of tests and we're gonna rate them and at the end of it, we'll have final conclusions. So don't jump on it quite yet until you've watched all of it, okay? So throughout the show, we're gonna be popping back time to time and we'll be talking about obviously the different effects we've got, our thoughts are doing various things okay so the first thing up poor old buster's come out of retirement again he's had a coat of primer we've put him into four we're going to put four of these on test okay so we've got aluminium uh we've got another aluminium okay we've got another aluminium and we've got a dark aluminium the reason uh, i could only get dark aluminium and i've got an alkaline dark aluminium the rest of them so the shade is going to be slightly different but obviously the true metal ones come in various ones you've got gun metal iron steel so forth and so on okay so for the point of this what we're going to do for this first one is just pretend that we've done our model okay it's used our standard primer so nothing flashing there at all and how quick it is to paint it okay uh the, the type of things you're going to have the type of problems set up stuff like that and all the rest of it now from my point of view as you can see we're set up because i'm doing a lot of spraying this week so i've got the spray booze in front of me i've also got one behind me the thing you do have to remember that alclad smells a hell of a lot it stinks the house out so does most metalizer paints okay that's why i quite like the mr metal color because you can hand paint it okay and true metal being a wax is something completely different again all right so i know there is different ways of doing this and i don't want anybody saying oh you should have done it this way this is a purely just to chuck it on and to see what type of effect we get for this first one okay so i know there's various things i know talking air pressures and thinning it and different ways actually watering this stuff down uh and you can spray it on i know all about those but this is just for normal modeler who's coming along who wants a normal metal finish okay so okay in one as i say we've got the true metal and this is the aluminium okay now as you can see it comes in a little tube which is absolutely great you can unscrew the top okay and you can see the top of paste in there now various ways you can put this on we spoke about it. you can actually thin this stuff down and you can actually put it on uh through an airbrush so you thin it down uh it thins down and you brush it airbrush it on and then buff it and it comes up absolutely fantastic okay but from our point of view what we're going to do we're going to put it on with a brush okay and go for that so we have our brush here and to be honest i use this brush for all my type of metalizers so all we're going to do is literally just going to get a bit off of the brush and you can see it just comes up literally just like this it's really nice stuff now i don't know which one we're gonna go with all right i think what we'll do we'll do um the tail section okay and then you can just literally brush this onto your model okay now initial thoughts is very goes on very easy coverage is amazing in fact too amazing because quite frankly i've got far too much on my brush here okay um 
and it works in well. Smell, there's a very faint smell, which to be honest is reminiscent to something like uh, shoe polish or furniture polish, something else like that. I presume this is the wax in there. And as I say, I've got a little bit too much on the go here. So what we'll do immediately, we're just gonna take out a bit off because it went a lot further than I thought, which is a good thing. Okay, so literally I'm just gonna get a load off the brush and then rework it in. Okay, because I have completely gone over the top with this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just take it down to a, a level where it obviously hasn't got big lumps and pools of it all in there. Okay, so we're just trying to get it to it. So it's a, just a nice thin coat on your model. Okay, so from the point of view of going on, very good, very straightforward, no problem with that at all. Okay, so we're just gonna clean up that brush a bit, get rid of that. Okay, so there you go, not too bad. It goes on there, to be honest, it doesn't look anything at the moment, it looks quite random. All right, so next up we're gonna do the metalizer paint, okay, and this is, is gonna be the actual aluminium color, and it's color, uh, color number 218, all right? This stuff, you have to shake it. You might be able to see in the bottoms, uh, on one of the close-ups, you can see you get it in there. You need all that to go through. It's the thick, gooey stuff that does all the work with this. If you don't, then it's not gonna go anywhere. Like, me just pop the lid on. So we know the tail is the true metal. Okay, next we're just gonna have a go with these. Now I need to find a different brush. Okay, and again, we're gonna hand paint it. So. Speed wise, not too bad, doesn't really smell, okay. We know it's a hot paint, but actually it's not too bad at all. Now there is a few little secrets with this. Basically you want to use a very soft brush. Um, I'm using what I've got for this because as a lot of you know, I'm not exactly a, a painter, a brush painter. I tend to airbrush absolutely everything. And again, it's going on very nicely. Okay, it'll be interesting. So we'll do these areas to see how it works into corners and crevices and all your gaps like that. But again, for your money's worth, it's going on, lots of it. Okay. Okay, so there we go. We're just gonna put on a coat. So there we go, that didn't take long at all. You can see we're silvery. Now remember, in all of this as well, just to keep in mind, Buster, as we know, has had a million coats of paint over the years, and he is nasty. So don't worry too much about, obviously, the effects you're seeing and getting here. Okay, so that's the easy ones out of the way. Okay, so if you wanted to do silver work and anything else like that, then obviously there's your options. Both of those two, hand-painted on, as you can see, not too bad finishes on both of those. A little bit flat and cloudy on the top, okay? Bottom one, okay, it's aluminium and all the rest of it, all right? When you're dealing with these next ones, you need to airbrush them, okay? They don't just hand paint on because it's too thin by its nature. The trouble also that you're gonna have, uh, in fact, let me find a different airbrush. If we put this on with my Neo. Retrieve the free. Um, is that you have to play with it a little bit, okay? As in, turning your air pressure right down is number one. If you spray it too high on air pressure, it tends to cloud up, okay? Secondly, you have to prepare your airbrush as well. You can't just chuck it in if you've had like a, an acrylic paint in there. So you will need a drop of a cellulose thinner, okay? Just to make sure everything's going well. And I know a lot of people don't do this. Uh, it's personal choice, but many people say to me about, um, you know, they have uh, get problems and this, that, and the other. And normally it comes down to they've got residue or airbrush cleaners in there and things like that. So I find by putting a little bit of, uh, oh, we just use a cotton bud, uh, a little bit of synthetic or a cellulose thinners or a lacquer thinner, depending where you are in the world, into your color cup and lining it and everything else like that. It just makes things work a lot better. Okay, so no problem with that. So what we'll do is we'll do the alkali last so it's furthest away. So again, make sure you've had a good old shake this. I think it probably has. Um, the other thing is while we're pouring this stuff, it hates being poured, so I usually do a pipette into the, uh, and I'm just gonna suck it up and blow it out. Okay, 
Immediately, the smell. It stinks. Metalizer paints by their nature are always very smelly, the airbrushable ones like this. I've got the spray boobs on, trust me they're behind. If you're using it normally, use a respirator. Off air, trust me, these are all going on immediately. But just for the moment, so we're just gonna check the flow. Okay, coming out again. Whew, it's strong, okay? And again, I've got nowhere to grab this. All right, so what we're gonna do is, flow's good. So we're just gonna go along and we're just gonna lay down a light coat first. But as you can see, it gives a very nice metal finish. Uh, it's quite localized, so it doesn't, it's not like overspraying normal acrylic paint, shall we say. You can actually keep an eye on where it's going. Okay, it covers extremely well. Okay, just like so. Okay, well, we're, we're going to roll, we'll just do up here as well. And we'll just do down inside here. But immediately, to be honest, the smell is pretty intense. Okay. And as you can see, you don't use too much as long as you're not spraying it on really heavily. Okay, so if you're just lightly spraying on, you won't have a problem there. Okay, so that's that one on. Okay, so that is our normal Mr. Uh, sorry, Model Master Metalizer Silver. So when you're looking at it, okay, so from my point of view, looking at all three, this is far the superior so far. It's even and everything else, but that's because it's been airbrushed on. If you're using it, you know, this stuff airbrushed on, it'll be neat and even as well, and then you just buff up. But generally, as we know, Alclad is great because you get the tinting, you can do various things with it. You can shade it, pre-shade it, stuff like that to really bring it to life, okay? So that's that one. Then what we'll do, we're just gonna have a quick flush in here. Okay, so we're just gonna flush this, give this a quick clean out and everything else. To be honest, I'm gonna put the spray booths on, have a nice clean airbrush, and then we'll be back. Okay, so there we go, nice and clean. Compressor to be on, compressor. Extractor is on, to be honest, because literally of the smell. So last up, we've actually got the Alclad, okay, which is our old favorite. So, okay, so here. Again, we're not gonna need tons. Oops, got a whole new pepper, I think. Okay, so we'll pop that in there. Again, if you get things like it runs around the sides on these, always deal with it immediately, purely because you don't want this stuff going anywhere you don't want it. Okay, we'll check our flow coming out. Now remember, the colour isn't going to be the same. All right, so don't think, oh, it's a different colour. In the case, don't take any notice of what you're seeing down here. Okay, and then on we go. Immediately, the smell is a lot more intense. Okay, you can smell it. It's very strong. It's very powerful. Okay. The coverage isn't quite as good, if we're honest. It takes a few more coats to to get it to uh, cover, okay. Just up the air pressure just a little bit to help with the coverage. Okay, and it goes on. Okay. So just going along, and it's more like plating because you literally build up your layers very slowly at a time. And we're done. Again, we haven't used too much paint. All right, so again, yeah, I'm gonna take this back. Okay, let me just pop that out of the way for a moment. Pop the lid on. Okay, let's have a look to see what we've got. So, as you can see, my favorite is definitely the Alclad. The Alclad has that real metal, true metal look to it. This looks a little bit artificial. That's okay, but it looks fake, it looks like acrylic paint and that looks quite horrible actually compared to the two so straight off the bat spraying down as you can see the Alclad is your out and out winner no problem at all the downside to it is it stinks in here now and I only sprayed that amount imagine if you were doing something big okay don't rule these out yet I'm going to come out of the room get all the extractors going get rid of this smell and then we're going to have to see what we can improve on these two with a little bit of rubbing <laughs> 
Okay, there we go. So, oh, around about sort of 15 minutes later, we're back in here. Smells okay now. Um, let's have another quick look to see what we've got so far. So literally on the overhead here, as you can see, this looks perfect. No problem at all that. If I had that on my model, I'd be well chuffed. Okay, the midsection down here. Oh, and obviously it's totally dry. Nothing comes off of this. You're not going to lose anything in transfer or anything else like that. Again, second one, this one in here. You know, a little bit coming off, you might notice. Got a little bit on our finger. Okay, so you can actually work this one being a slight buffable paint, okay? So you can actually go around and give this one a bit of a rub to try and improve its overall appearance. And I'm a great believer in using your finger because hopefully it comes out. And as you can see, you get the sheen on your finger and go round. But you can have cloths. And to be honest, I've got my old faithful t-shirt down here. Okay, so we're gonna try and improve this one by giving it a little bit of a rub Again, don't forget, this is bust up. He's not nice. Okay. So there we go. So you might see now it's a little bit more shiny. Okay, looking the part. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to give the alclad a very light rub as well. But you're not going to get anything off, but sometimes it just gives it a nicer appearance just by buffing it up. Okay, which actually it does, works quite well. Okay, so there we go. That's the the one down here very nice okay so then let's have a go at the rear now this is buffable paints all right so what you can actually do is go around and give them a rub and you can really bring them to life okay and this is the thing with the the metalizer type paints where you can do this type of situation where you get it coming off on the cloth and you can go in and buff it to literally an inch of its life to give you a very nice metal look and again i do have to say buster is quite horrible uh, i even cut the tail off through here so this is all filler so don't take any notice of that uh, all right but again now it's had a rub you can actually see it starting to come to life okay with all of these different sections so as you can see this back one really coming to life all right now the big one we want to have a go with obviously is the new one on the town I'm just coming in here, give it a good rub. And try buffing this guy off. Okay. And the great thing is as well, when you're buffing these metalizers that go on by hand, you really can give them some stick. You know, I must admit, I buff it until it, you can feel the heat coming through. And that's when you tend to get, if I do this top edge, this edge up here, has an absolutely fantastic look to it. You can see the shine it's getting, all right? And that's the thing with it. And don't forget, this is aluminium. It's coming up like chrome. So the new one on the town being this guy. Okay, so what we're going to do, new bit of cloth, and we're just going to see what happens here. So again, we're just going to start off lightly rubbing. Okay, and we can get a little bit more firmer with it. Do you have to be careful there because it was still wet that was my fault that bit don't take any notice i noticed it was going over it's still wet there all right because you want to put on quite a thin coat and it's a bit too thick there okay and we can go along and we can give this a real good buff up and again if buster wasn't such a horrible kit I'm covered in lumps bumps and nasties as you can see now we've got something Pretty good going on back there. Okay, so there we go. This is our little quick test to start with. So that's your differences in it. So the drawbacks, fours and against. Okay, the fours with this stuff, uh, with the true metal, okay, it's very localized. You could do a small panel, mask it around it, buff it, um, and then you've got a very nice metal panel. Okay, quick, simple, no problem at all. My problem to it is, so I'm not sure how much continues to come off of this after you've finished buffing it okay because it is the trouble with all the metalizers that they tend to keep giving as you can see here after they've done apart from things like alclad uh, because they're no problem at all all right but i do have to say there's a couple of little techniques you can do paint brushing them is an absolute one of my favorites so for instance this bit down here what i would tend to do is 
use a paintbrush to buff it. I find paint brushing is a lot better finish than actually rubbing it all over. But hopefully you can see this one down here, no problem. Again, localized, you can just paint it on by hand, no problem at all. But then you have to buff them up and you get the trouble with bleed off. So these other ones down here, obviously we get nothing really coming off of them, especially the Alclad, because the Alclad, what you see is what you get. So you can make your own decision on there. I know it's a different color, but looking at Buster now, you can see you've got this nice color at the front, straightforward out of the bottom and everything else. And if I'm honest, it looks slightly better on camera, it does to my eye. Okay, you've got uh, the metalizer, which is the Model Master metalizers, again, straightforward out of the bottom. You can give them a rub as well to sort of buffer them up as well. They do two flavors of it, buffable and non-buffing. This is the non-buffing one down here. But again, it, it does give a bit, but not tons. Or you've got your buffables. So the trouble you have is if you're doing L clad, one, it stinks. Secondly, you've got to prepare your airbrush. You need to airbrush. You've got to clean your airbrush outwards and all the rest of it. But then you don't have to go around buffing it and have trouble with it coming off on your hands. So really, there's not a lot of difference in time between using an L clad than there is using some of these like a true metal or um, you know something like a buffable paint like a Mr. Metal Color, purely because the time you would spend buffing, cleaning, making sure you're not getting any more off or anything else like that is gonna be the same no matter what you do, okay? So there we go, that's sort of test one. So if I had to say looking at them, what I like the best, I have to say it would be the Owlclad and the Mr. Uh, Mr. Color Mr. Metal Color, to me, look the best at this point. But again, we're gonna have a final for a quality test a little bit later on, uh, and we're gonna do it on neat plastic card, which will be polished and everything else like that to see the best. This was just putting it on a model, the quickest and easiest way to do it, okay? But certainly from my point of view, looking at them, I would have to give it at the moment to the Alclad, because it's straightforward, it's on, it's done, no problem, and to the uh, Mr. Metal Color. Next, it would have to be the True Metal, and then obviously this one down here, which is the Model Master one, but there's not a lot in it, okay? So no problem there. Next up, what we're gonna do is mask it. So we're just gonna use a standard. We've got here some 10 mil Tamiya tape. Okay, we're just gonna come across. I'm not gonna detack it or anything else like that. We're just gonna place it right the way through. Gonna give it a rub all the way over as if I was masking up. Okay, we're gonna leave it on there just for a moment whilst we do this one as well. So we're just gonna come on here. Now, I know normally I would detack it. We take the oils from the backs of your hands to sort of, you know, detack the actual tape instead of just putting it on neat, but not everybody knows that. All right, so we're just doing worst case scenarios for this all over it, okay? So there we go, so that's that one on. So that's have a peel back, okay. Ooh, that's not good. Again, could be Buster. Okay, so if you are from a tape point of view, in reverse order, this is what we've got. So if I can be trying clever here and take, stick this down. Okay. Could be even more clever. Something like that, there we go. Almost. As you can see, loads of uh, residue coming off of this, we can see it in great detail. That's the trouble though, buffables give and give and give. They're a nightmare, okay? They need to be sealed before you can do anything with. You can see this, the normal metalizer, not as much, but definitely we've got some residue and it's peeled some off. But again, don't take too much analysis of that. Although saying it, that is literally just peeled. Yeah, no, we can actually fault that because it's actually lifted the thing, but it could be because it's on an edge, okay? So it might have torn from the edge across, all right? But generally, as you can see, we've got it all over. Our clad, hardly any. There's hardly any lift on that whatsoever. Okay, so it hasn't peeled off from the our clad at all. It's generally just left it on. Looking at the model as well, when you're looking down at it, oops, stuck to it now. <clears throat> Let me get rid of it. <sighs> looking across, we can actually see the tape residue in this edge. Uh, if we buff it, we could probably lose it saying that we're not okay so we've actually got a tape mark in there we have got a little faint tape mark in here but not as much obviously as here and on the Alclad no tape mark at all so that means you can basically quite happily mask it peel it off and you'll be good to go all right as for the true metal if we unmask that as you can see we have got some residue on here. In fact, we've got quite a lot of residue, which we'd expect because it's a buffing type. Okay, and then if we gave it a rub, 
to blend it in. Actually, that blends in really well. That's disappeared again. Okay, so that's not too bad at all. It's very hard to see it. You can just about still see it. So that is your drawback with buffable paints. By their nature, they are always giving, okay? So you're always gonna have that trouble um, of leaving residue behind, especially from tape. That's neat. Normally, you would do the old back of the hand trick. So you grab yourself a little bit of tape, put it onto the back of your hand, and keep doing that until it finds it very difficult to stick. Okay, so you just keep going like this. I'm picking up skin cells and all the greasy bits. Then you can place it down quite lightly, come along, spray it, and then peel off hardly anything on this side and you've got no mark at all. So we all know there is tricks around it, okay? But let's say, we're just doing worst case scenario. So there we go, from that point of test, you'd have to say thumbs up for the Alclad, no problem at all. I've used it. The only trouble I find with Alclad sometimes is if you leave tape on too long, it can be a little bit, um, peelable shall we say sometimes I've done this to it where it's peeled things off so make sure you've got a good primer coat down that it can actually attack itself onto speaking of which um, this just had the standard um, MIG ammo primer down first and then sprayed right over the top of this so as you can see we've had no reactions with primers to top coat so technically it is an acrylic um, actually what they call it but I should have put the lid on um, it is a polymer uh, surface primer and it hasn't affected the metallizers in any shape or form they've all taken on there an absolute treat so there we go straight off of the bat you'd have to say the alclad wins it hands down from the test its best performance in coloring no problem at all its best performance in its actual um, usability as in you know taping over it things like that is no problem at all you're always gonna get trouble with deckling. Um, I know somebody said, how does they take decals? I guarantee carrier film will show through on a silver finish no matter what it is. So there's not real much a point about doing that one. But from our first test here on a model, a rough model, just to see how it's working and everything else like that, you would have to give it obviously to the Alclad because that looks really nice. And then I would still go with my second place choice would be the uh, Mr. Guns, sorry, uh, the Mr. Metal color one from the uh, Mr. Hobby range, okay? And then, as I say, it's a bit torn with this. This is good stuff, it's hard as nails, but it is still coming off um, and everything else. So, so far, we're like that. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna reset. I'm gonna get a plastic card sheet out. It's gonna be neat straight onto it, and we're gonna see how good the quality is from polishing it, and then we can have a go at overcoating it to see how it stands up to, obviously, the day-to-day -day things of things like clear coats, flat coats, satin coats, and just general glosses. Okay, so there we go, that's part one. I say more to that to come in a moment. On the metal finishes, something that would be really handy for all this sort of metal work to go onto is something with a metal finish, certainly like the Necrons. Okay, as you know, here on Flooring Models, we like to like try something a little bit different, get into new things, and we're very open to ideas and suggestions. One of these ones came along the other week when um, Warhammer came up in the forum. Uh, some of the guys were talking about it, I say the other week, it's probably a couple of months ago now. But some of the guys were talking about it and obviously it's a big thing. Obviously your kids are into it and stuff like that. Um, and really it's a side of modeling that is a proper art form of its own right. Painting figures is something a lot of you know I am terrified of because I'm not very good at it. And it's one of those things, if you're not very good at it, know your limits I say, stay away from it. Something I'd like to learn and spend time to learn and know properly. But certainly things like Warhammer, you guys doing all these tiny little figures and the repetitiveness of doing it, because you're not just doing one, and you're doing armies of them and everything else. Anyway, uh, one of our members, obviously is into this in a bit of a way, sent me this kit and had a look, and he said, look, just keep an open mind, have a look, uh, have a, uh, a review of it and see what you think and everything else. So lo and behold, he sent me down this one. This is for the um, Warhammer 4000 series. Okay, and this particular one is for, what are they called again? The uh, Neocrons, or Necrons? Neocrons? Neocrons, I should think is probably better. Okay, as I say, forgive me for all you guys who know Warhammer, I know absolutely nothing. Somehow, and let's face it, I'm into pretty much all the geeky stuff. I am probably the biggest geek you can meet. Um, Warhammer, somehow, I missed it. I missed the boat when that one came along. And as I said, it's one of those things. 
but generally having a quick flick through the magazine or magazines manual book whatever you want to call it for this one it just shows the depth of everything that goes on so to start off with we've actually got it's like a match pair system this obviously they're available separately you've got the book okay this is everything from obviously your color call outs your guide uh, the background history to everything that goes on with these obviously talking about who they are where they come from where they're going and all the rest of it like that everything in full detail it is the complete you know, almanac of actually everything you would ever need to know about this particular one. And then obviously a lot of it is devoted to the rules and, you know, the weaponry and what they do and the maneuvers they make and everything else within the game. Okay, but generally, as you can see, great photos uh, for actually what you can achieve and what you can go for and absolutely everything else like that. And again, Citadel paints, brilliant stuff. Hand painting, I still maintain they're one of the best hand painted paints you can get. So down in here, which is still sealed, we're just gonna stick a blade in here. Okay. So in the box you get, as I say, beautiful artwork is everything on these. They are absolutely fantastic. So on the back you've got your brief history of actually what you're going to get in here, what you're actually going to get. So it's saying your contents, you're going to get 20 warriors, uh, five immortals, uh, five uh, scarab bases, one ghost arc assembly, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And obviously because of how popular it is around the world, you will find a lot of it is in many, many languages. So in the box, which is very heavy, you actually get this lot. Okay, the first thing that jumps out to me is there's a lot of plastic in here and it is absolutely solid plastic. This isn't your, it, this is more reminiscent of sort of an ABS plastic uh, rather than a styrene. It's heavier, it's thicker, it's more solid, it's chunky. You know, it feels like it's supposed to be played with versus your normal traditional styrene from your model kits and that, which obviously you would then put on a shelf to gather dust forever more. So, no separate bags or anything else like that. It's literally all chucked in. And as I say, knowing nothing about this, so excuse me if I have no idea what I'm talking about. The first thing that jumps out to me is, as I said, it's very, very solid. The texture actually on each of the parts, which we're gonna drop the camera down right for this one, because I think it's well worth pointing a lot of this detail out. As you can see, the actual detail is extremely fine. You've got the chest plates here, for them and you've got their legs obviously we're looking at the back with the joints and everything else like that the first thing you notice is they are little miniature um, models in their own right the texture is different in different parts so obviously we've got like where their thigh is and the ball joints and things like that up to the spine they're different layers so it's like the the mold itself has been textured so it transfers onto these as you make your way through so down here we've got the shoulder rigs as you can see down there and then if we flip to the correct side you've got the skulls again each of them are beautifully done the detail is absolutely exquisite on these and then looking at the fronts for you've got the feet and the nose uh, the knee joints and the thighs and everything else like that and then over here we've got weaponry so we've got arms which are all fitted on ball joints makes you interesting to know how they're going to fit to the body in a moment okay and then the guns as you can imagine beautifully detailed right the way through and those on the top and I imagine we're going to get multiples and multiples of okay so that's a multiple of that and that's a multiple of that that's a multiple of that that's a multiple of that and then we get to this one again not knowing what I'm looking at here so we're guessing this is something to do with one of the ships uh, picture right the picture oh. yeah this is going to be the actual arc itself uh, the main ship running down but as you can see we've got the spines the chest plates the rigs and everything over here if we just run it down as you can see some nice work there we've actually got injured soldiers as well so we've got legs missing off of them that's not just a mismold they're supposed to be like that okay and then if we move down to the next part as you can see we've got weaponry all the rest of it then over here again more weaponry parts and then up to the top and then if we flip to the other side you can see extremely well done but the thing is that i noticed this thing weighs a ton it's a lot it's not just your normal sorry excuse the phone uh, but it's absolutely something different it's let me just get rid of that 
Okay, so this will be the ship again. So actually what you've got down here, we do it this way around, it might be better. As you can see, it's nice recessed detailing, very solid as you'd imagine the way it should be. We've got the other part to it there. And then on the other side, as you can see some more of these parts, very, very chunky. Obviously we've got different soldiers, these are bigger guys, just down here as you make your way through. Okay, and then you've got more of the actual army itself, different ones, different weaponry, as you can see. Some very nice touches in this with the old weaponry fit. Some more bodies, more heads. As I say, you get 20 soldiers, I think it was five of the bigger ones, and then the ship itself. Also what you get is all your bases, as you can imagine, just like that. You also get, reminds me of my Star Wars days, Okay, so you've actually got some very nice uh, fluorescent, sort of probably glow in the dark stuff as well for the actual weaponry themselves. Bigger faces for the bigger crew. Then you've got the actual decals. So the decal sheet, as you can see, we just tow this camera out a little bit more now. As you can see, some nicely done, some nice technical with a circuit board print, things like that looks all very good very much in register okay we've got a couple of clear parts just down here i assume that's for a stand and then we've also got sorry some more of those so we've got those we've also got this clear base as well that's just a tab so we've got a clear base i assume that's for the mother the carrier ship to come down on and then deep amongst all of this we've actually got this one here, which I assume it just talks about assembly. So as you can see, we've got the assembly for the soldiers going down there and the weaponry fit. And for the other ones, as you can see, and again, all the different types you've got. And again, And again, multiple choices, okay? Again, artwork, exquisite all over these. And then you've got down in here, this is for the actual putting together. We're really gonna have to move the camera right out for this one, big instructions. We've actually got here, this is for the, the actual carrier itself, the mothership, so to speak, going together. As we can see, very nicely done. Obviously with the soldiers in system going on okay and then finally we're into the back for the final assembly there's that clear part we were talking about for the plinth for holding it up get more soldiers okay all the way through and again showing fitting of everything going in there down to part seven for the final assembly on the deck on the back. So there we go, that is, to be honest, the first time I've probably looked inside one of these kits. Now, I know everyone says they're very expensive and all the rest of it, and I appreciate all of that, but a couple of things have jumped out to me as I've been going through this. First of all, the quality of the actual sculpting um, is absolutely exquisite. It's very, very nice, very heavily detailed, okay? I imagine painting of these could get a little bit, you know, tedious to go through them all, uh, especially if you were doing more than one set of this, because uh, obviously you've got multiples of, but it's just a case of you know working it down in layers. So you're to that point where you're perhaps gonna stick all the silver work on first, then you're gonna come back and then do the, the sort of, you know, pick out all the details with different colors and things like that. So I think once you get on a roll, because obviously by the time you've done to one load of them and you come back to the start again, it's probably dry as well. But the plastic as well is extremely tough. This is that real strong, ABS toy-like plastic versus what we tend to get with a normal kit, which tends to be quite thin, delicate. You, when you bend it, it just stresses and goes white. This stuff, I can imagine, you don't stress it, it just goes with the flow. So it's a pretty solid item once they're built. You're not gonna be in a situation of it having to worry about it falling apart 
which is again is what I assume this stuff is designed to be played with and used um, you know on a sort of weekly basis so it's really there to be picked up handled and carried and maneuvered around the actual the playing field itself so there we go our first look at Warhammer 4000 some very nice detail some fantastic sculpting but artwork and the detail and everything else that goes into these is absolutely wonderful so there we go that is the Necron uh, the Necrons Warhammer 4000 series. So there we go, something I'm, as I say, completely out of my depth on. Apologies if I've got it all completely wrong and everything else like that, as you said, I'm not up on that at all. But if you want to see more things like that, then obviously just let me know and we'll be sure to bring you more reviews uh, and guides and things like that on it. But I know lots of you in the forum are into it because you post up some great work on it. But as I said, it looks pretty good stuff. Okay, so back to metal finishes. And over we're here for a series of tests on overcoating uh, and how workable it is and everything else like that and airbrushing it down. So let's get on with part two. Welcome back. Okay, next up we've got here. Now this is a sheet of standard 5mm plastic card. Um, I've actually completely wiped it down with cellulose thinners first. Uh, it's had a good rough, uh, rub even. Uh, doesn't look too bad. A couple of little bits of hairs around here, but that's just generally here. But generally good. Now, I know what you're all saying. It should have a black background, blah, 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 blah. Okay, it's not. It's gonna go straight onto here, because as I say, we want worst case scenario testing. We all know we can improve on this as we go through. So what we're gonna do is work this back in reverse order. Okay, so for this one, we're going to come back with our dark aluminium or aluminium colour. Okay, for this end, and we're just going to put down what would be a nice, neat coat. All right, so happy how that is. Okay, so all we're going to do is literally, this is how I would put down. So what I tend to do is I tend to go in with a very nice light coat first, nice and dusty, just trying to keep it even, okay? Not trying to flood an area or anything else like that. And then we're coming back and we're just overrunning to get a nice coat going on here. A couple of things I like about Alclad. One, it's very directional. If you're trying to spray uh, another type of paint, for instance, if you were trying to come in with uh, a normal Tamiya, acrylic, or anybody else's, you would have overspray now everywhere, okay? And it would be quite a problem. The only trouble we have is dust. <clears throat> We're just gonna kick that on to get rid of some of this, okay? So then what that is, it's on there quite nicely now. I'm just gonna come in now with a slightly heavier coat. Okay. Alrighty. And as you can see, or you might be able to see, it picks up all the little imperfections, so you get hairs on there, everything else just like that. And to be honest, I'm just gonna hit this guy as well. This is the only drawback to using this stuff. It is extremely thing, and you might be able to see this is all going that way now, so it just shows how these work, okay? And it's actually clearing the room straight away. I can't emphasize enough health and safety when using things like Alclad, any type of airborne, as in airbrushed, metalizers okay or anything that you're actually doing you really need to have you can probably get away with just one so we'll just run with two uh, for you guys who don't know i've got two of the aircon big 38 watt systems here exhaust now uh, and we've got obviously the big spray booth behind us as well they tend to work in tandem uh, very very nicely but really get yourself a respirator don't breathe this stuff in i do so you don't have to remember that okay so next up we are just going to go straight in because it shouldn't affect. This is the, and I hate pouring from these because they hate pouring. You always get a big splodge running down the side. Okay, so now this is just the, that's true. This is the uh, Mr. Metal, uh, the, sorry, the Model Master Metalizer paints. And again, same type of technique with this. Put it down a nice light coat first, it's beginning to spit. That could be the state of my airbrush rather than anything else. Come in with a nice 
nice heavy coat. There we go. And I know we have the difference in colour here, but um, it really shouldn't matter too much. Bottom there. A little bit more. And the thing is, from my point of view, looking at this, I can't see these lines. I can, can see from above. And this patch in the middle, because when you manoeuvre it, as you can see, you get differences in light and texture. So we're going to come in now with a heavier coat, just to blanket that entire area, okay? See, there we go, not looking too bad. This one down here, as you can see, is a wet patch. So when it dries down, it should be absolutely fine. Okay, we're just gonna tip that back. Now this particular time, what we're gonna do is actually airbrush on the other two as well. Okay, so we'll just grab it on this. Come into this with a very much an open mind. I'm not a fan of metalizers. Don't get me wrong, a lot of my stuff I've used it, and obviously you've seen a lot of my builds, and we've used them. It's just that from a point of view of health, I elected to stay away from this type of uh, paints and things like that generally, uh, and try and keep on more of the more nicer acrylics. Okay, that was the point to it. Okay, so next up we're going to use the, um, this is the uh, Mr. Metal Colours Aluminium, okay. Goes on. Now this, you can spray neat, but it's a little bit thick if we're honest, okay. I would like to thin it, just to give a, a more of a nicer a finish, and from the point of view of saving money. Alright, so we're just going to make up. And I tend to put in around about a third thinners to two thirds paint if I'm thinning Mr. Metal Colour. Okay, so happy with the flow, okay. We go in. I'm spraying all of these, I roughly, around about the sort of, I don't know, it's probably around about 18 PSI. It's not as light as you think, okay? So you might notice that one covered a lot quicker, faster. Okay. And that's because it's a little bit thicker. It's not quite as watery or thinned as the other ones, okay? And as you can see, I've done that, which is the biggest panel of them all, and I've still got tons in here. And it doesn't matter that you've thinned it, you can always tip it straight back. Okay, so that goes back in there. Okay, a little bit of thinner, let's get it in. Now this is where it becomes a little bit different. I haven't tried to thin it with anything else, but when you're thinning the true color, I tend to use white spirit rather than anything else. Because it's a wax uh, and not your standard type of things. My only thing is here, because I've put the cloth down on the surface, what we're going to do, a little bit of this. I'm just going to re-clean this side because as you can see it's got the overspray from every other one we've done on it. So we're just going to get rid of that. So we start off with a nice clean sheet again. Okay, so we keep it all nice and fair. Alright, but you can see, very messy, I'm covered in it. Right. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of white spirit through the airbrush to start with. Now white spirit and metalizers do get on. Don't get me wrong, they do work. It's just that I think from my point of view, I would rather use a cellulose thinner rather than a, uh, a white spirit. And again, it's all to do with the smell. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna knock it up inside here. So just in the colour cut, we're just going to pop in a bit of a splash, as you can see. So we've probably got half a mil in there. And then all we're going to do, we're just going to take around about a centimetre of the paste and drop it in the colour cut. Okay, so we're just going to put the lid on. And all we're going to do is give it a good old mix. Now. If I was you, I wouldn't do this. Don't mix it in the colour cup, mix it separate. Because if you get a lump go down by the needle, it's gonna spit like a, a little git. But that's why I left the brush in there to try and stop it getting down there before it melted. And then you should end up with what technically looks like a metalizer. But as I said, you need to get down there with the, where the needle is. Okay, so I'm just gonna come up. You can also do that if you wanted to, to um, spin up the air pressure just a little bit. Okay, you can also do that to brush paint it as well. It's a little bit thick. And I'd say it smells a little bit like shoe polish but covers extremely well when you airbrush this. Okay, and I've still got absolute tons left in there. And the only trouble is now you've got nowhere to put it. Okay. So just looking at our evidence, as you can see here, these two colors are basically the same. They're both dark aluminium. These are just aluminiums in the middle. All right, so as you can see, don't take too much notice of the thing. See if we can kill the camera. I balancing it out with this. It's that shiny, the camera's having trouble focusing with it, okay? But there we go. Hopefully you can see on this camera a little bit better, being a better camera. You can see them down there. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna give them around about 10 minutes. I'm gonna leave the room, extractors on, I'm off. Okay, let this totally dry off, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna buff them all up. Okay, so there we go, um, dried and say it'll play havoc with the camera, as you see. But hopefully you can see on this one, pretty good. And as I say, it's all different colors, as you can tell. But generally, looking at the different cameras, different angles, all the rest of it, not too bad at all. So, next up, what we're gonna do is give these a polish. So, good old fashioned Mr. Cloth again. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna start it in different layers. I'm gonna do this bottom section first. Okay, so as we know, this is your alclad, which isn't actually a buffable, but it does take off the bits. Sometimes you get fibers in there, it will get rid of them. It's pretty tough. Don't think alclad is as gentle as you might think, okay? Obviously you don't wanna handle it too much, you're gonna scratch through it. Okay, next up we've got the aluminium. Okay, so we're just gonna give it a light rub. Okay. Just in there like so. All right, then obviously we've got the Mr. Metal color, which is a buffable, it's a full buffable. So as you can see, you get the sort of swirly pattern straight away, so let's look for a, a soft bit there. And what will happen is this will all sort of blend uh, and it's not rubbing it off. Don't think it's rubbing it off, it's just blending it all together. And that's the nice stuff with this. It gives you a very muted, finish okay so there we go that's that one done okay and then our last one so looking for a clean spot there we go new rag we have is our color in here which will buff up okay excuse the fingerprints on the edge of it 
should have allowed somewhere to grab it really but again give me a nice good rub actually I have to say this is very bright and I'm just doing this with a normal old tea towel it's not like I'm buffing it with anything specific okay so there we go happy with that all right so if we have a look now hopefully you can see okay without whiting out the camera on top but definitely this one here I don't know which one's your favorite but from mine from that test I would have to say the Mr Metal this is the true metal uh, that is I think a beautiful very little bleed okay again lots of bleed on this one okay that is the trouble I call bleeding where it keeps giving like that that's horrible that's really bad okay luckily it just comes off on a bit of a cloth but the other two tiny little bit nothing at all from our cloud so from a test of literally onto a nice flat surface now for the type of thing you're going for don't forget we're not this is supposed to be aluminium this one down here as we said it's supposed to be like a dark aluminium well obviously we've airbrushed it on that is very very nice and as you can see it's extremely reflective the camera's picking it up big time versus the other two um, the camera lies quite frankly don't forget with the LED lighting and everything else so what you're seeing down here isn't necessarily a true reflection on what you've got but certainly looking at them the feel of this as well nothing coming off of this now whatsoever which is really nice which can't be said of this one so generally from my view of looking at it I have to say that the true metal one looks the best um, it's far superior to the uh, Mr. Metal uh, which obviously it's been thinned um, and it's been uh, you know sprayed on things like that again it may be that I've over thinned it perhaps keeping it um, you know neat from the bottle would have been better when you compare it to what we've got here as you can see it gives you a little bit more of a, a difference on here and as I say I know the camera above hates this ping this way but as you can see this is this color down here all right all right and then this color down here is for this one as you can see and this is why i did it on something like buster because it's like the true view of it um if we just give this tail another buff up because to be honest i gave it a quick coat of the thin because i was determined to make it work okay so there we go that's the true metal so pretty good then obviously this one down here we go the other way and then I'll see when we're down into amongst them all we've got the middle and then the end as you can see and I hope what I'm trying to show here is that when you put it down on a flat surface it's not really a true representation of what you're going to get on your model I say to be honest this looks pretty rubbish if we're honest it's not exactly brilliant so the camera absolutely hates it because it's so reflective um, and it's trying hard to compensate but the aluminium on a flat piece here just doesn't work get it on here this looks lovely got no problem with that at all okay this is dark aluminium looks really really nice there not so okay um, but down here on a polished effect um, I do I absolutely love it it's fantastic no problem with that at all so what I'm going to do just give these a buff over literally like this all right it's just my thing because what we're going to do is we're just going to give it a light test uh, with my tape all right so actually what i'm going to do is just gonna run this across my hand to take off some of the the tack never put it against your clothes because otherwise you pick up all the lint and that's not good you don't want to put lint on but if you use the grease and skin cells from your hand it works a lot better okay so we're just going to place on i'm going to lightly place in as if we were painting and masking and everything else like that we'll be happy how that is okay now we're going to lift off just to see what we get i'm hoping the camera is going to play ball here right okay so there we go we can see we've got overdue down there which is going to be a thing we'll see if we can get rid of it shortly we've got it in here which is fair enough you can see a little bit going on here and catch it trying to get it in the light sorry come on camera I know you're hating this 
Okay, there is, I can see it, uh, a dew mark in here, but it's very even if you like, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is just literally pop back in and see if we can get rid of it. Because I wanna know if it's the stickiness will rub out. So we're giving this some real beans now, I must admit. So that's a no joy. Okay, now we're just going to into this now. And the alcohol. Okay, so next testy. I don't know if you can see that. We've managed to get rid of it. We've got rid of it and we've got rid of it. No problem at all with a light buff over. Um, unfortunately, true metal. It's still there and it is properly there. That isn't gonna go anywhere. That's completely in there. So you don't wanna be masking over this stuff under any circumstance whatsoever, if we're honest, okay? The great thing with Alclad is, is that because it's quite tough once it's down, things that stick to it, you can rub them out and get rid of it. So now what we're gonna try and do is just gonna polish up this guy here, okay? really like the way it polishes it's a bit because it's obviously wax when you're polishing it it's like polishing it, it comes off absolutely lovely minimal off of there okay now we're just going to come in this one here okay good old polish okay as i say definitely running out of clean spots Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're now gonna have a look at to see how it overcoats, even if it does overcoat, what happens when you overcoat it. Okay, so we're just gonna... Okay, right, so I think the easiest way for this is, if I just grab a, uh, dee -dee -dee. I don't want to um, go over the other one, one second. Okay, so we've got here a sheet of white card. Um, one little trick I do when I'm masking up uh, anything, and I don't want to have the mark of the actual tape in there, I tend to use card, all right? The idea of using card is, uh, technically it's not quite big enough, um, but um, you can make it wet, not soak it, because obviously you don't want water coming out, but it will stick then, hold on there, then when it comes off, you have water residue, but it wipes away. That's the theory behind it. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just gonna wet the edge of this, okay? So all you do, literally, you just come along, put the water in there, and just wet the edge. Okay, let it absorb and begin to soak in. When it goes in there, it becomes more pliable, instead of being quite stiff, and the edge will stick. That is why I do it. So if you were doing something, obviously you wouldn't have a giant sheet normally, you just have a small bit, then you can come in and you can do something like this. Okay, so you can place it on and then stick it down. Okay, and it actually sticks. Then you take your bit of kitchen roll, whatever you want to do, and you can just clean up the edges. So it's all dry. Okay, and that will hold and stick. I know we're dragging each around there now, but that's the point of it. So if you were doing camo, you can put this into slices and then wrap it around something like your plane uh, and it'll all stick to it and away you go. So that's the, the theory. Anyway, right, uh, next up, what we're going to do is just gonna blow this out quickly. Don't self clean airbrushes. Okay, so I'm gonna put down something we would all use every day, which is technically the old school clear gloss. Um, obviously the new stuff works exactly the same. So what we're going to do, we're just gonna put a small amount in here. Okay. And then all we're going to do, I'm gonna place these on here, just so we can have a bit of a fiddle, okay. Check our flow. So what I'm going to do is lay down what I would do a protective coat from before deckling or something else like that. 
so it'll be not doing that. Okay. Now we all know about using various things. Okay, so that's that on. That goes off, we just stick them on. Okay, just pull them out. Just so it happens, we have a hairdryer just to speed this up. Okay, so there's our towel. As you can see, that's the thing about using a you can see now the difference and say the camera absolutely hates this stuff. But you can see how it affects the finish you have. We tilt it like this. You can see, obviously, we're masked here. This is it. That was showing the bottle, how it's changed the appearance of it. Not so much with the Alclad, pretty close to what it was anyway. And then obviously on this camera here, if we maneuver it around, you can see you don't have that problem in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to unmask purely because it helped the camera out. You can see the different areas we've got here. Okay. As I say, the trouble is when you're doing testing like this, it's there's so many little variables into it, like primer coats, what you're going over, what you're doing, and everything else like that. But hopefully you can get a, a feel for it. So there we go. That's the actual um, the sheeting themselves. So looking at it we can say there's not a lot of difference here between actually being masked and overcoated with something like Johnson's Clear. Immediately you can feel quite smooth, it's about the same, okay? So there's no real difference in texture which is giving you the difference in appearance, there's not, nothing really in it, okay? You might notice on here we've got a little bit of stippling, uh, one of the other cameras might catch it better, but we have got a little bit of stippling on this. Um, I'm not sure if it's just where I went in a little bit too heavy. Uh, it might have been something in the airbrush, but I haven't come across it too much before, but doesn't seem to like it too much. But you can see a big change in difference in color between being overcoated and not. This little guy down here, again, you can see a difference in color. Um, if anything, it seems a little, just to darken it a little bit rather than change its hue. This one here is a lot darker. It looks flatter. It's not as nice, okay? But all we're going to do now is literally just gonna give it a little rub over both just to see what we get okay just to buff them all up as it is the thing when you go over this it's like because <laughs> it's the wax so generally as you can see it's just trying to catch it in the lights you can see it all in the lights it looks patchy as hell on the overhead just doesn't look like that when you look at it that's the thing but hopefully on this camera angle you can see catch it in different lights and things like that you can see what's going on from my point of view obviously this is just a quick test uh head to head test but from you know as i'm doing it right here right now looking at this i would have to say Alclad does do what it does it's very good at what it does um, it's been around a while now they seem to have perfected it we're into our clan 2 these days they're doing different colors various things it is good drawback to it is it stinks it's not very good for you it's got loads of nasties in it it's got more nasties you can shake a stick at um, it's quite expensive because obviously you're just getting i think these are 40 mil bottles or are they 60. ddd you think you'd have it written on there somewhere um doesn't actually say what it is, but I think that's a 40 mil bottle. Uh, as I say, round about, I think around about six quid a bottle now. So it's quite expensive because you will go through it quite quickly. For instance, if you're doing something like a 132nd Mustang, you need a couple of bottles of it, all right? So you're gonna be looking at 15 quid's worth of paint to paint your model. Next up, you've got your Model Master. 
to be honest, it went on very well. It did what it did. Um, as I say, this is the non-buffing type here. I know they do a buffable one, but we wanted to keep it straight. You can give it quite a good rub. Um, in all the tests, none of them have worn through. We haven't rubbed our way through any of them, uh, just playing with them, uh, done very, very well. Very good, um, again, like the Alclad, it resisted masking quite well, um, so we had no problem with that. The change of color is subtle, it's not, you know, I think the Alclad wins this hands down because there's not a lot of difference between the two, but it's definitely in second place. There isn't much of a problem with that. Uh, the Mr. Metalizer, okay, again, massive difference in color. The worst one out of them all for being overcoated. Just doesn't like it whatsoever. It's not designed to be overcoated. It leaks all over your hands. It's still coming off now, <laughs> you know, even though it's been sealed in, it's obviously got off the sides um, and it's still giving up. That said, it's very easy to use. You don't have the smell as you do with these two guys. You can hand paint it, which is a massive bonus. Uh, recent builds I've done, engine blocks, things like that. You can do something like that. With these, it'd be a right chore to do it. With that, paint it on, dry brush it, comes up beautiful, job done, no problem at all. So from that point of view, really, really good. Uh, again, resisting um, being taped over, masking, because you can buff it in afterwards, all right? So that's not so much of a problem. True Metal, the new one on the block, and reason why we're here. I have to say, um, there is a difference between the two, as you can see down here. It has affected it. It's not brilliant, okay? It comes in third place from that point of view, but ease of use, this stuff is brilliant. I like working with it. Unfortunately, the masking, it's no good for masking over generally. As you can see down here, it's not very nice at all, but you can probably see, you get the light on this. It really is the closest thing to metal color we've got. Okay, so, Yes, it's pretty messy stuff. Yes, it does leave residue behind. Yes, it doesn't like being overcoated. But it's the best looking metal color we've got here. Out of them all, when you're looking at it and going across all of these colors and shades, it's this guy that stands out the most as I'm looking at it from a point of view looking at it here, it looks the most like metal to me. The Alclad doesn't. Um, it doesn't look right sitting flat here. On this part, to be honest, as I said, we can't really tell because this tail was awful and Buster's awful, but the Alclad worked best. So what we're really saying here, there is no real winner. There is no definitive, this is the model to go with. This is what you need to use because each one of these has their place. If you're wanting to do an aircraft model and you want a nice metal finish to it and all the rest of it, Alclad is your one to go with, but it stinks. If you're in an environment, perhaps you've got children, you're spraying in the home, things like that, it is not the best one to do. You need to have one of them, okay? You need to have a very good spray booth system back there. And it's exhausting. Don't get one that just filters it because the gases that this guff releases, you know, is in the odor. It's just gonna go through your filter out the other side, okay? Even if you've got 10 layers of carbon in there, and it's not gonna work, okay? And you need to have it exhausted so it takes it clean out of the home, all right? You do not want it in the home. The normal metalizer ones, as I say, Mr. Um, Model Master, they actually do a buffable version as well, which works extremely similar to the uh, Mr. Metal Color. Um, again, it resists masking, which is brilliant for it. It's okay with being overcoated. Uh, as I say, it's our sort of second place one here. It's not too bad at all when you're looking at it. There's not that much indifference. It works really, really well. Drawbacks to it is, again, the smell. Uh, secondly, you tend to go through even more of this. This is what, a 15 mil bottle? Uh, yeah, 15 mil bottle. Uh, a price on those is a bit tricky in the UK at the moment because there isn't actually a UK distributor as I do this now, uh, December 2014. But certainly, you know, uh, it is a worthy contender and it is well worth having in your range. And to be honest, I don't quite the camera's got it, but that I have them all in there um, from that I've been using readily recently. The buffable one, which to be honest, you know, hasn't fared too well in our thing on this test, but in here, it's probably the best looking metal for a shiny metal, shall we say. It's far superior to the Alclad. The Alclad looks dull. It's a lot better than this one. It didn't peel and lift. And obviously the one on the tail, okay, which is the true metal. So in usage, this stuff is brilliant. You can hand paint it on, brushing it on, dry brush to take it off. It's a beautiful paint to use. Their dark iron is exceptionally good as well. It definitely has its place. Again, if you're doing small little parts, you just need something metally, 
hand paint it. These two, you know, they're going to be a bit messy. That one, you can just brush it on, come along afterwards, give it a little dry brush, and away you go. If you want to see that in action, have a look at the hind build, have a look at the truck build uh, for the F350, because I did the entire engine block with it. The hind, we did loads of dry brushing with it. It's good stuff, you know, it has its place. No real smell to it, and a lot, lot easier, okay? Okay, last up, the new boy. Okay, this stuff, to be honest, coming into this, I was a bit skeptical when I first heard about it. I thought it was rub and buff all over again. I uh, was never a fan of that the first time round. Only ever used it once, never got on with it. Um, you've got that thing, it's a wax, uh, and that's the difference. You have to treat it in a different way to using a paint, all right? So you can't actually compare it to these guys. That is the thing with this. This particular one is a different way of doing it. It's a different system and everything else like that. From our point of view, when you do compare them to it, it's fantastic. It's got the best metal finish here out of any of them, okay? And I think, um, you know, in a moment, I'm gonna try it on a model. I'm actually gonna airbrush it onto a model and I'm gonna buff it up and see what's gonna happen with it, okay? Which I'll share with you in a moment. But certainly from my point of view, um, it's easy to use. You can brush it on with a brush. You can put it through an airbrush, you know, a little bit of um, white spirit to thin it down. It will work absolutely fantastic. No problem with it at all. Limitations is obviously now we know is masking. Okay, it doesn't like being masked. It doesn't like being overcoated particularly very much either. So you might want to use it for that sort of final metal finish um, and then do it. Nobody has ever come up with a good sealer yet that will seal down metallics. Um, Model Master do a metalizer sealer, which is probably the closest you're gonna get to it, but it's not perfect, not by a long way, okay? One day somebody will come out with a metal sealer that just goes on and it just keeps that lovely luster. This lovely luster is brought out of, it's a lovely smooth finish. The particles are so small um, and all polished in with the, the buffer balls that that's what it does for you. As soon as you overcoat it, unless you've got a pure gloss finish to it, or the same finish to what's down there, it will change it. The light refraction will be different, and that is the problem with it, okay? So, unfortunately, there is no easy way to it. It just depends on your spraying. One person can spray it one way, get a great finish, the next one comes along and it's dull. You know, it is just as simple as that. But from this test of going round, and as I say, we've done it with a model, we've done it with these guys, to actually go down and put all these together to try and work out which one is the best, you know, has not been an easy task to be honest doing things like this so there we go in testing you know really what can you say at the end of the day true metal is the new one on the book on the block um as i say it's very hard to put it with these because obviously these are airbrush based this one you sort of brush on this particular guy it's a wax it's like using a floor polish um or you know getting rid of rings on tables and stuff like that or right down even to polishing your car so it's very difficult to sit here and say oh look you know it's on a par with these guys these do it this way this does it that way because really they're not the same if you're doing a comparison between model master and alclad to be honest there's not a lot in it they're pretty close um alclad would win hands down for me every time uh the mr mr metal color the great thing about it i like to be able to dry brush it on as you know you can use it just literally as a dry brush or you can actually put it down as a paint and then buff it with a brush lovely stuff this stuff will have its place in the hobby i have no doubt i think if you wanted to do an all over metal finish this is the one you want to go for Deckling over the top is never going to be easy uh, and then overcoating is going to be another nightmare. Nobody does a good top coat yet for any of these unfortunately. When it comes along I'll be the first one to grab it, test it and tell you guys. But from my point of view, looking at them they all have their place. You know, Alclad, it's fantastic as you can see. There's not a lot of difference between any of these colours as you do it. On the model it looks great, okay. Hand painting, model metalizer putting it on, uh, Mr. Metalizer, putting that down and then doing it, no problem at all. You can get a very nice finish with it. Um, you know, the non-buffing, as I say, this is the non-buffing variety, uh, the Model Metalizer one. Again, pretty good down here in the normal testing, not a lot of difference, pretty good on the model and it was very resistant to masking. True Metal, it does have its place, but as I said, masking, it hates, doesn't like it full stop. It doesn't like being overcoated. That said though, it's got the best metal color look you can possibly get here. So from my point of view, it gets a massive thumbs up. Everybody should have this in their arsenal. Just get a couple of colors and away you go with it. As I said, it's just personal choices. I try and keep away from the smelly ones these days, so I don't tend to use Alclad. I had to dig that bottle out of my stash to find one because I don't use it anymore. Um, I do like these guys because you can actually put them on with a brush. Um, and you know actually go around with them and do it everything else but at the end of the day my two choices would be for doing metal colors and metal coats will now be uh, 
probably the Mr. Metal color. Still like it. I like the ease of use and be able to buff it by hand. And now I'm going to be using the True Metal. So there we go, jury's out. Is there any rights and wrongs and things like that? I'm not too sure. As I said, it's one of those things, um, personal choice, what you're using it for, how much you worried about the smell and stuff like that. Alcloud, as we know, we can see down here, came out absolutely fantastic. Um, this is one color. I know some of the other colors are a bit more harder to work with, but again, you know, it, it's horses for courses. It depends what you're actually doing with it. If you're going for an all over metal finish on something um, and it's a solid lump, you might be better off with true metal colors. If you're thinking about perhaps aircraft, other things like that, then you might be looking at Alclads. It really does depend on where you are. Smaller bits and pieces, I highly recommend things like the Mr. Metal color. As I said, engine blocks, small areas, you could just paint it on and buff it. It's absolutely the best stuff out there. And again, I must admit, I use it and their buffable stuff is the Model Master stuff. I say I have their complete range I love it. There's another part to this, which guys, you can watch actually up on the site as well. And this is where we literally just take our little friend here and he has had a complete going over with it. So um, this wing has been done in uh, one of the other colors. The other one is stainless steel uh, and stuff like that. But as you can see, you catch it on the light. It works really, really well. And that's just using the true metal colors. So certainly there's more of that to come. And as I say, there's slight cuts to this guy so if you want to watch the full thing in full detail um, then obviously members you can watch it actually on the site and do it like that but I hope that's got rid of some of the myths about new metal finishes how to use them what you can do them where you can't at the end of the day as I always say all metal finishes it's more like plating than painting it's all in the preparation of your actual model. It's all to do with how the primer coat has gone down there first. So it doesn't matter if you're using a gloss black primer, it doesn't matter if you're using just a satin primer or anybody's primer. It has to be perfect because this stuff will show every imperfection you've done in your model. And that's why a lot of people like myself don't like using it. Because whereas if you've got some normal acrylic paint, you can just spray over a bad joint or a seam or something else like that, this will just magnify your problem. So if you've got a bad seem it will look terrible using these guys okay if you've got something like a blemish a fingerprint just a dodgy bit of paintwork it will show up and stands out like a sore thumb it is like putting a fingerprint on a mirror because it, you will just see it no matter where you are and it's all in the preparation and looking after it and building up your layers and then overcoating it you have to be so so careful as you go through so you don't lose that beautiful luster that you've actually fought so hard to get with because in one fail swoop as we know you can lose it okay so just take your time with metal color paints new metal finishes and stuff like that and have a new appreciation for the guys who do it and do it extremely well because there's some guys out there who do amazing metal finishes and they look spot on and there's a lot more work that goes into it than perhaps just doing a normal camo okay and everything else like that so there we go hope you enjoyed it something a little bit special if you did again let me know um and then what i can do is perhaps i can do other things and we can have specials on i don't know filling sanding camos and stuff like that where we can dedicate a show every now and again just to doing that type of thing I have got a mountain of editing to get through now uh, and everything else because this has completely thrown me this week and also I've got a mountain of reviews still to bring you. So I had in this week which will be up hopefully next week, we've got the new T90 with the dozer blade from Meng on there. We've got the Trumpeter Dragonfly to review still. I've still got to do edit the review for the Sherman tank. We've got Sandro has and RS. Fine Moulds did us this. I've got to do the full review for that, so that'll be up next week as well. Um, and also, whilst we're talking about it, I am going to review a few of these, but also these are going to be the prizes for the D-Day. I know all you guys are waiting to find out about the D-Day and who won it and everything else for the last group build. The medal should be here early part next week, so we'll get it all out to you. But third prize will actually be, this is the Academy Twin Pack for the Typhoon and the Spitfire. Okay, that's going to be for third prize. Okay. <clears throat> Second prize is going to be, this is the Tusker, I do believe, Rebox by Eddard um, for the actual Sherman. This is the M4A1 Sherman, 135th. So that's going to be second prize in that group build. First prize is going to be the Tiger. This is the Tiger 2, Eddard 1. Um, I, can't, I think this is Academy's uh, Rebox of it. I think we agreed on the live show and everything else. So that is going to be the first prize. Also, Sid 
is going to give a special prize, which will be this one. So this is the Hella pack. I was going to make him build it, but I'm not that cruel <laughs> using their paints. Okay, but they say I'm not that cruel, but the actual kit itself is absolutely fantastic. So for this one, you actually get the horse glider and the little mini DIO set with all the bits and pieces in there for it. So that'll be a special prize to one guy for it. So we're going to pick the members. Um, I'm going to sit down pick the actual uh, the winner myself and the teams from those I say everything should be here and then obviously uh, everybody who took part will get the medal you're going to get a sticker set and then the winners will actually get obviously these great kits as well so there we go that's it for this week hope you've enjoyed this special until next week everybody happy modeling and take care